Hello, I am Aoyalaipe, and I like to hop into top tier matches in War Thunder and then personally kill the entire enemy team by myself. Welcome to my channel. All right, the Belgian F-16A. So uh, th this this is the, this is the new plane that was added in the last update, and it's it's really really interesting because its defining feature is that it is gratuitously overpowered. Just absolutely hands down without question the most completely overpowered bullshit that Gaijin has ever put in this game. If you think the pre 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 nerf Gripen was bad, ho oh, ho, you've seen nothing. So uh, of course Gaijin gave me a test drive on this thing and enough golden eagles to slap an ace crew on it and also enough to slap a talisman on which I went ahead and did because I mean, yeah sure, I guess I wouldn't mind owning the French tech tree, you know, if, I mean if, if you're offering. Um, I wasn't planning on unlocking the entire French tech tree this update, but I mean if Gaijin is just going to hand it to me, I'm, I'm not going to say no. And the uh, the basic problem with this plane is that it is just hilariously, hilariously under tiered. So about a week ago, a trickle of players who are better at this game than I am managed to start getting their hands on this thing and they've just been spamming world records since then, like all of the world records. Except for the world kill streak record, not not the plane record, but like the any vehicle in War Thunder record. Uh, it's only tied that one as of the time of recording. It's broken all the others though. And yes, I did eventually decide to just put an ace combat skin on this plane for the lols. Uh, I'll link this one in the description. That actually makes it a, a bit tricky to cover this plane. You see, I like to make sure people learn something from watching my videos. And if you learn that you can do really well if the game developer makes something absolutely egregiously overpowered and then immediately gives it to you and only you for free, then uh... That isn't really very useful knowledge. Uh, you probably could have figured that one out on your own, and, and my viewer retention would really suffer if I stretched that lesson out over like 8 to 12 minutes. Now, my best game with this thing was only uh, this number I'll add in post because it keeps changing, and, and that game w was neat because it was my personal record. However, I'm sure that match that I probably haven't played yet at the time of doing this voiceover was just me seal clubbing some confused down tier with AIM-9Ms. So I'm going to show you this match instead, because I felt there were some interesting close calls that happened, and that means I can teach you something other than AIM-9M goes burr. Although I assure you there'll be plenty of AIM-9M goes burr in this video. Okay, so the Belgian F-16A is in the, the Benelux subtree, which was just added to France, and it has six AIM-9Ms. Now, in realistic, this plane's battle rating is 12.3, but in arcade, which is what you're seeing here because this is a top tier ARK channel, its battle rating is only 12.0, which means you can get it into an 11.7 lineup and get down tiered to face some really confused 10.7 players. And if you're like, uh, well, what's the catch? Well, there really isn't any. Well, actually, there, there's sort of one, but, but I'll get to that later. Also, I think I only got two or three people in that pass, which is unusually low for this plane. Yeah, I figured I'd show you a game that was just like a little bit sloppy at least. You know, make it interesting. And that's a bit of a problem because the meta for surviving a furball with this plane is just shoot down the entire furball and then fly away, reload, and do it again. And since I didn't do that, I wound up with a tornado on my tail. And worse yet, it took me a while to notice that tornado was coming after me, and he is now in a perfect position to kill me with a missile. So I'm actually going to just let him sit there in the perfect position to kill me as I fly away and set up some teammates to shoot him off my tail for me. You see, if someone is in a perfect position to kill you the missile and they don't shoot a missile at you, that means they don't have a missile. Given the match only just properly started, he must have only just fired off his last missile, which means he only just started his rather lengthy reload. So even though he appeared at first glance to be in a perfect position to kill me, he actually wasn't, and he wouldn't have really been able to kill me unless I panicked and tried to turn away, which would have given him the ability to cut the corner and get a gun kill on me. Now, the, the skill I'm using to kill these people here, however, of course, is that I'm better at making YouTube videos than they are, so Gaijin gives me all the really overpowered stuff first. I'm still the only TTAA content partner, so for the first week or so this plane was out, I was basically the only person who was able to fly it in arcade. Well, the only one who would fly it in arcade in a minute. There, there actually were a few realistic YouTubers who took this thing out for a spin in arcade, but I can't say who they are since most of them wouldn't want to be caught dead actually having fun in top tier arcade, and that information is technically confidential, except for Draconix DG, and I'll link his video about this plane at the end of this one. And uh, as a bonus, the name on the stats page or kill feed for this plane is just F16A with, with a little Belgian round next to it that no one notices. So people tended not to realize this was like the new plane they were facing until most of their team was already dead and it was kind of too late to stop me. And my batting average for 20 to 0 team wipes was like 1 out of 6. I'm not gonna lie, it felt really unfair. Okay, so here we have another tricky situation. Um, I see this MiG-29 and this can be a nasty plane to deal with, so I double tapped him with A9Ms while he was in a, still in a good position for me to get him, but he dodged both. 
that tells me he's a good player, and he's also in a good plane, so this can get a bit dicey. Now, the MiG-29 is fantastic in a 1v1, but it struggles with multiple enemies. So the first thing I do is I'm going to hit the deck and head for Ground Clutter. This version, the MiG-29, only has R6Gims, which can be easily flared, and R27s, which have a really hard time locking onto a chaffing target at low altitude. And Jesus, that guy just dodged another AIM-9M that was, like, perfectly within the envelope. The basic idea here is to delay the MiG-29's ability to lock on me while I head off and shoot down a few of his teammates that are in the area. He winds up breaking off before I could complete my plan, so I can't quite show you how, to, how it would have worked out. However, the basic idea was that most War Thunder players tend to shoot at the nearest target. So if I shot down some nearby enemy players, then that would have freed up my own nearby teammates who were or would have attacked the guys I just shot down. That means that I would have had teammates in the area who were available and looking for targets, and the closest target would have been that MiG-29 that was chasing me. Thus, the very, very, very likely outcome is that he would have been hounded by, you know, one or two or three of my own teammates, and MiG-29s don't do well when that happens. And so, yeah, the guy broke off before I could make that happen, which is what a good player would do under those circumstances, and he certainly seems to be one of those. Now, this whole isolation move isn't specific to the F-16A. I mean, it works fine on this plane, but that's because everything works fine on this plane. This plane is ridiculously overpowered. Uh, however, the move also works fine on anything that just has a lot of firepower. So anyways, let's get back to uh, talking about the plane itself. The F-16A has two caveats. The first is that it doesn't carry that many countermeasures, but you can put a countermeasure pod on it. This pod ever will take up one weapon pylon, so you only get five A9Ms if you carry the pod. And if you do take the pod, you'll have five A9Ms and basically unlimited countermeasures, so long as you know how to use countermeasures properly. And if you don't know how to use them properly, then don't worry. I'm sure Gaijin will nerf this plane long before you unlock it. However, if that somehow isn't the case, um, I used the countermeasure pod on this plane just like how I used it on the Kronos 2000, so go watch that video and copy-paste the basic idea. However, I am not using the countermeasure pod in this video. I really only use it on, like, water maps. With a plane this fast at this battle rating, I can make do with, you know, trees and low hills. The second caveat is that the F-16A has energy retention that seems to be really bad when compared to other F-16s that carry A9Ms, like the F-16C or even the Barak II, especially if you have the flaps down, which you can do at any speed because it's arcade. This actually got me a few times when I first started flying this thing, because I, I would just fly it like an F-16C and then I'd be like, why am I always breaking my speed? It took me a while to realize that, wow, this thing handles remarkably similar to a MiG-21 now that I realized this. And if you aren't aware, my profile picture is just a MiG-21 wearing sunglasses. I figured that profile picture would be funny, but then no one seemed to get the joke. So anyways, yeah, guys, Gaijin put an F-16 in the game, made it handle like a MiG-21, gave it AIM-9Ms, and then criminally under-tiered it, and then gave it to me and only me for the first week. And uh, I don't know about you, but personally I don't see anything wrong with that plan. I think that was a great idea, and Gaijin should do that way more often. In fact, they should do it for the uh, the Japanese tech tree uh, next update, because that, that's the tech tree I want next. I think the energy retention is why this thing got a low BR in Arcade. Uh, planes with low energy retention tend to get lower battle ratings in Arcade. The reason why is that afterburners are capped in Arcade, so that basically means acceleration is nerfed, and flying a plane with low uh, acceleration and low energy retention can be really tricky for many players. Basically, if you're in a plane like that, you'll face constant temptations to do something really stupid, and to be blunt, the key to flying a plane like that is just having the discipline to not take your own bait. But ultimately, the reason this thing is so overpowered is because it's battle rating is so low. If you're facing 10.7 players with this thing, they have no idea how to fight aim 9 so they just get farmed for kills. To make matters worse, the highest battle rating lineups in arcade for the Russian and American tech trees are now both 13.0. So if you get this thing into an 11.7 lineup, you won't really get up tiered to face them. Instead, you will basically always get down tiered. So this thing barely gets up tiers its current battle rating, instead it, it is the up tier. And it has such a criminally low battle rating that teams basically come pre-snowballed and you can just mow them down. With most F-16s, I, I tend to excel on really mountainous maps because the terrain gives me lots of places to hide and then ambush people, but uh, with this particular F-16, I actually do better on flat maps, uh, and that's because the enemy team has nowhere to hide from me. However, most of the record proof videos I've seen weren't on mountainous maps per se, but they were on maps with really high terrain features like African Crater, which is a map that a lot of records have been broken on. And the reason why is that the terrain gives you enough cover to be able to pull up high altitude strats and be survivable. So if you encounter a clueless down terror, you can just mow it down from a cornucopia of unexpected angles. Unfortunately, I barely got those maps in the queue when I was in this thing. I, I don't know if I was just unlucky or I didn't play it enough. I'll link a video
video in the description to a 43-0 match that Jay Zion of Covert had with this plane. And uh, the last neat thing I'll say about this plane is that I've been able to start burning through all the 10-kill and Terror of the Sky wagers I have just laying around. Fun fact, if you finish one of those wagers on a 23-0 kill streak, you'll make almost as many Silver Lions as you would have from finishing the same wager on a 27-0 kill streak. The more you know. And okay, yeah, I am now officially running out of remotely useful things to say about this plane. I, but thankfully, I don't really need to say anything else because the uh, the whole enemy team is dead. The match is over, and that's basically the end of the video. So yeah, this plane is just wildly overpowered, and it's buried at the end of a long subtree. None of you have, and a tech tree almost none of you have. Thanks for watching. And if you subscribe or ring the bell, you won't need to remember how to spell AOLI pay next time you want to watch one of my videos.